the core, which is unconditional love. That's all everyone is doing to you. And it's hard to accept that sometimes, once again, because it hurts when we get betrayed. It hurts when we get cheated on. It hurts when we lose people. But it's really just because of the attachment that we form to them and the label that we've given them in our minds. We all change every day. And free will is our birthright. So even getting mad at somebody for choosing not to be your friend anymore, wanting to go a different path, you know, just wanting to be more intentional with themselves. It's like, how are you going to be mad at somebody for using their free will when you're going to do the same as them? That goes into someone not having the same beliefs as you or maybe seeing things the same way that you do. That's okay because they're using their free will the same way you are. So it's not our job or our place to get mad at that. And we attach to things because we believe that that thing we're attached to can give us a form of value that we can't give ourselves. So this is why the relationship with ourselves, it's always going to come back to the relationship with yourself because if you're truly pouring into yourself and giving yourself all the love that you need, all the guidance that you need, you have that firm found relationship with God, with source, with the universe, whatever label you want to to say, because it's all, it doesn't matter who comes and who goes because you're good with you. Nothing can ever come between or mess up the relationship that you have with you because you built that firm foundation. So losing friendships is definitely a big grief. Definitely. And it does take time to heal through it and do the shadow work. Feel the feelings. Like I said, if if anger and sadness is coming up for a couple days, don't try to run from it. Let it be. Feel it. A lot of times people think that when you get on this journey, it's all love and light and that you have to be happy 24 7 and that if you don't you're you're now back in 3d you're lowering your vibration y'all we raise it to lower it to see oh let me go back in the lower vibration and see if i can actually apply everything that i've learned and and done in this high vibration and truth be told once you relate once you master the relationship that you have with yourself and you're able to remain on this high vibration it doesn't matter what happens part of this human experience is the emotions You'll never not feel anger, sadness, confusion, bliss, love. This is part of this experience and why we chose to come here. It's actually very cool when you look at it on a higher perspective. So there is no point in shaming yourself for feeling these emotions. And of course, we might prefer bliss over anger. But once again, you can't you can't pick and choose one without the other. They're one and the same. So you have to embrace these things and Even with your sadness and anger, you can use it in creative ways. You can create a song with it. You can do art. You can go stomp your feet outside in the grass. You can go to a rage room. Like the the things that you can create with your emotions are so divine. And then even using them in creative purposes rather than destructive, you start to value and respect and appreciate the emotions so much more. And even being vulnerable in your emotions and acting in them and expressing them, it allows for a deeper intimate connection with other people because this is something we can all relate to. So it's funny how we're programmed to feel shame for certain emotions when every single other person on the planet is feeling them along with you and they can all relate to you. So the more vulnerable we can get, the more open that we can get, and the more that we can share these emotions with each other, the closer we will bring. And all we want is connection once again. This is all we desire in everything we do. So I know men specifically, one of the most repeated things that have been told since childhood was, man up, stop crying like a little girl. I know men have been highly conditioned to feel like they cannot show emotions, that they have to have on a tough act 24-7, that they have to be strong. And this is so, so, so crucial, y'all, because that's not true. Once again, we all have that divine masculine and feminine energy. We are one. And this is why people say that we are one. Yes, we are in different figures that we have chosen to maneuver through this experience, but we are one. We have both energies lying within us. Left side being female, right being male. (laughs) Emotions need to be felt. Emotions need to be expressed. And really think about how divine and beautiful it is to really sit down in a room full of people and be able to get so intimate. Like y'all are really talking about the most intimate things and seeing it builds deeper connection within each other because it shows people that they're not alone. A lot of the times on this journey, we feel very alone because once again, having relationships when we first started where we're seeing like, oh, I don't resonate with anyone I did before. I don't want to be around the same people. Like we're still trying to find our people, but we're still not yet in the 
in the place where we're able to do so. And even right now, we're all spread out worldwide. So even though we all get on these calls and we talk all the time, it is not the same because not yet are we in person and we crave that in-person connection. So this has been one of the hardest things for many people on this path is the relationships. So with the people around you that you have now, and that you continue to meet, be your true authentic self and don't hide any emotion. Don't hide anything. Your trauma is your treasure. Your trauma is divinity. Your trauma, nine times out of 10, the person to the left that you can relate to. And once again, we often feel alone, like I said. So you speaking your truth, you speaking your story, just show somebody, oh, I'm not alone. They don't even have to have that conversation with you. They don't even have to choose to engage in it. But them just seeing like, oh, they also went through that as a child. I don't feel alone anymore. It opens up the door for them to feel comfortable to communicate eventually once they, you know, work through that throat chakra, once they feel comfortable balancing those emotions and just speaking through them. If anyone has any questions, you can put them down below. I promise I'll get to them. But also with breakups, we let's talk about the type of relationships. So in, in this experience, we have karmic relationships and we have soulmates. We have twin flames as well, but I'm not really going to touch too much on that topic because that's just a different direction <laughs> that this call is really on. But it's very important to differentiate karmic relationships from soulmates. And karmic relationships are the ones that will knock you off your feet and plant you in the dirt. Those are the ones that will have you boo-hooing, y'all. You know it's a karmic relationship when, point blank period, For I, I've been seeing many of us in the chats dealing and breaking up with toxic relationships. That's a karmic relationship. And just because it's karmic doesn't mean it's bad. Karmic relationships are just as beautiful as soulmates because, once again, it pushes those buttons to bring you into a deeper healing. Sometimes we need that extra aggressiveness or we need that extra push for us to really be able to oh I don't want to deal with this anymore oh I don't want to get treated like this oh why am I allowing this in my life so it's very soulmates is a lot more loving it's a lot more soothing the lessons aren't as demanding and harsh and we have many soulmates soulmates aren't just one person who you're supposed to be with for the rest of your life soulmates are friendships y'all we're soulmates Get in with me, y'all. Y'all are my soulmates. <laughs> so seriously, we have so many soulmates. So keep that in mind. Really keep that in mind. We, ha we have many karmic relationships depending on, you know, how fast we want to learn these lessons. And sometimes it takes us to go through things a couple of times to really accept it. So once again, don't down yourself for what you're going through because it's a new lesson being learned, a new perspective every single time for myself and my relationship that was toxic for years i stayed with him until i couldn't stand him i could not stand him i knew he was not the man i wanted to be with forever at a point eventually i knew he wasn't going to change i knew that i was miserable but i stayed with him until i couldn't stand him anymore because for me on my journey I had to keep getting those same lessons thrown in my face to actually accept them. Because once again, we deal with things in childhood that form our perception of what is normal in a relationship. So if you saw your parents getting beat on, if you saw your parents mentally, physically, emotionally, spiritually abusing each other, you will take that in from a partner unawarely because once again that's your normal so part of healing this relationship with our family is taking a look at who our family even is what did they go through in relationships you know was it healthy was it happy what were their beliefs what did they eat what was the music they listened to like really examining your family because these are the people that created you most intimately we're now in this state and awareness where we're all being intentional about reprogramming our brains and switching our mindset and our habits but once again we went through years of that in our our family create us the most so doing that work around the relationship with family is so important because it will reflect back to you why your friendships look the way they do and why your relationships look the way that they do so yeah let's talk about grief because grief has to go hand in hand in hand with all of this because that is the quote that's the quote y'all that's the quote that i was talking about thank you ski thank you so much anymore all right so grief 
Grief, 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 grief. Gotta love grief. Okay, this is one of the, I don't want to say hardest, but I would definitely say densest feelings to maneuver through because let's be honest, y'all, what feels worse than losing something that you never wanted to lose? That's a hard thing to go through, especially when it comes to them leaving this physical planet that we're on. Whenever we are dealing with these feelings of grief, I want us to always come back to this. Although this dream portrays to seem very real, with all the physical objects we have, with these flesh suits that we have, right? At the core, we are energy. And I know y'all probably heard me say this a hundred times, but I want you to really sit with it because it's one thing to hear it, but it's one thing to really know it. It's one thing to really feel it. And it's one thing to really embody it because embodying the fact that you are energy means that you have now taken control of this experience. This is why we do all the things we do. We're manipulating energy. This is why we try to manifest. This is why we try to call upon our ancestors. All these things we're working with energy so it's one thing to know but it's one thing to truly be and embody and pin that into your brain at all times no matter what happens so when it comes to grief I want us to please come to the remembrance of energetically we'll always be connected no matter what I'm getting an ear ringing (laughs) energetically We will always be connected no matter what. Yes, that physical presence may not be able to be continued on in this lifetime, which can hurt because sometimes we want that hug. Sometimes we want to just have a couple more times with them. Sometimes we want to just pet it, even if it's a pet. Pets are very spiritual beings. Pets oftentimes are a form of spirit guides to us. So this isn't even just for humans. This has everything to do with animals as well. Animals are very divine beings just as we are. So when it comes to that grief and that physical craving, just remember that it may not be the same form of connection that you are desiring for, but at all times you're able to tap into that energy. Think about it. You can close your eyes and you can literally imagine anything. And for the ones of us who are astral traveling and intentionally leaving our body and stuff, even intentionally going to, you know, visit the, visit this energy at different times of your life, the guidance is always there. And the energy will show up in different ways, shapes, and forms all the time. All the time. It could be a comet in the sky. It could be a feather. Like, the, ener- the, the guidance that's being given from certain energies that we have, you could say, lost is so divine. Grief, like I said, is definitely something that's going to be heavy and something that you have to sit with. Once again, I'm not ever going to say that your emotions are invalid. I'm not ever going to say that that you shouldn't feel them because that's the most important thing. It is. And having that unconditional love for yourself you'll start to see that these lower dense emotions aren't a bad thing. Oftentimes we can look at people and be like, I don't want to be around them because they're very dark. They're very dense, which cool. We have free will and it's based on vibration, you know, where we do want to be around. So there's nothing wrong with that, but it also can't come from a place of judgment. Like, yeah, they're too dark. I don't want to be around them because guess what? The only way to heal anything, the only way to get somebody to tap into that light energy more, the only way to become truly one and work together and us all to be connected is to love is to love is to love every single body shape form figure energy no matter what is being done you don't have to agree but you have to love it you have to accept it because you wouldn't want somebody to not accept you in your darkest times and we all go through dark times there's no 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 shame in the game y'all there's no shame in the game if you need to cry in bed for three days Go ahead and get yourself some tissues and curl up in that bed and cry because guess what? You're building a relationship up with yourself more and more and more. And with that self-love, it's impossible for you at a certain point in your journey to stay depressed, to stay in those lower emotions because you've been given the tools. You've been doing the work. You know how to meditate. You know how to do breath work. You know how to go outside and you know how to call up on your ancestors. You know that your spirit guides are with you. So it's going to come to a point where... You're not going to be depressed for weeks and days and months like you once were before because you're a new version of yourself, new awareness, new tools. So for us that have gone through a deep depression or are going through it right now, these tools, once again, the more we interplant them, interplant them, the more that we are not going to get stuck in these areas. Feel it, feel it. But also become aware of how long you are allowing yourself to sit in certain things for because you can still feel grief you can still feel sad you can still feel anger 
but still put yourself around people or still put yourself in situations that can help you and guide you. And I get that a lot of us like to go through things alone because that's definitely me. If I'm feeling anger, grief, sadness, I definitely want to be alone and get my energy right before um, interacting with other beings. But I also do know that after a couple of days, you know, if it's getting heavy on me, I might go link up with my best friend and I could, I could really not want to do it in the moment. But hours later, I'll be like, wow, I really needed that. I really needed that hug. I really needed that connection. I really needed somebody else to really just help me. Remember, y'all, with grief and all these emotions, there's no bad emotions. There's no, really, there's no dark or light emotions. I, I really want y'all to pin that through your head because they're all the same. It's just what it is. And coming back to the present moment through these emotions is the way to heal them because you can feel them, right? Journal about them. Find out the trigger for where they're coming from. And that's the most important thing about healing that I think a lot of people don't do once they do become aware of the trigger. Once you become aware of the trigger, it's important that you then in that moment affirm that trigger. Let me give an example. If you find yourself dealing with fear of abandonment, say you're in a relationship with somebody or even a friendship and they start to give someone a lot of attention or they start to, you know, want to take a couple of days to their self to just breathe. And in and, and your head, you're thinking you're going to lose them. You're thinking they want to leave you. You're, you're creating scenarios in your head that something's wrong with you. And this is why this person doesn't want to be with you. That's fear of abandonment. So in this moment, once you become aware of the trigger, this is where you affirm yourself. You give yourself a hug. You are safe. I love you. You'll never be alone. They love you. Rewire your brain in that moment and every day after. Continuously rewiring it, it will rewire. Think about how we learned everything in school. We did tests. We did pop quizzes. We read the same books. We heard the same thing weekly. We wrote. It was repetition. So it's the same thing with ourselves. We have to constantly reaffirm to ourselves, I love you. You are okay. You are safe. You are a God, you are powerful. Like, this is why affirmations are so powerful, y'all. This is why affirmations are so important to repeat because you have to remind yourself of who you are because your whole life you didn't believe you to be that person. It doesn't take one or two days, it takes repetition. And eventually, after you continuously repeat it, that voice in your head is going to be a lot kinder to you. You're going to spe be speaking love and light into yourself, and it's not going to be so you're not worth it, this and that. No, the voice is going to change. The, the the perception is going to change. So really repeating those daily affirmations, that's a great way to show love to yourself and build that relationship with yourself. To be honest, this goes back to the womb class, which I'm definitely going to hold another one on because the recording kind of um, messed up. But part of building a relationship with yourself on my personal journey, I've seen that celibacy has been a catalyst to that sexual energy is the most powerful energy on this planet and it's everything that we create with so taking time to be celibate and to not to not have sex with others to really cultivate that energy inside and use it intentionally like y'all you're building a very deep relationship with yourself a very deep relationship not having another energy linger through you and there's nothing wrong with making love and using that sexual energy to manifest together even in a union but taking time to be in your own energy and to be celibate, you know, let me work on myself right now. I don't, I don't need any distractions. I don't need anybody else's energy clouding mine. Like I'm going to work on myself and be intentional. That was a big way that I built a huge, deep relationship with myself through celibacy and doing that womb work. So, you know, I'm going to always preach for that. And then, yeah, I, I don't last, lastly, 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 I think we can just touch on um, how to move through it. Cause I kind of went all over the place. But I touched everything I wanted to, I believe. Um, how to move through it with love. <laughs> I know I said that. I know I keep saying that, but literally with love. Love yourself in every version of yourself. Love yourself for the ugly. Love yourself for the beautiful. Even love yourself when you're judging yourself. Because once again, it's a journey. It's a process. It's a it's a constant coming back to to that backpack of tools that you have on you. It's a constant, constant, constant constant journey and relationship with yourself so you have to love yourself through it all even if you you know sometimes we know better but we don't do better sometimes we know like okay maybe I shouldn't sleep with this person we do it anyways maybe sometimes we know we shouldn't be in a relationship with somebody but we stay with them whatever it may be you're gonna come to the day and the awareness where enough is enough and right now it might not just be that in that moment and that's okay 
because sometimes it takes a couple times to learn the lesson. So having that unconditional love for yourself, and we've been taught to love on condition. So even that is going against what you think is normal. One, one, one. Yeah, y'all. Unconditional love. And your heart is the portal to everything. Our heart chakras are the portal to everything, y'all. Like, it's we tapping into our, our hearts. It, it's, it's, it's that. It really is that. So literally i i love y'all i love y'all for even wanting to love yourself i love you guys for not even just being on this call and listening to me but i love you for your existence because you are enough as you are you don't have to even do any you don't have to do anything you are i am that i am and that is enough you are enough you've been enough this whole time you've been perfection this whole journey is about releasing the beliefs of us that think we're not perfection as is we are extensions of source come on now come on now I want you guys to always come back to this. Like, we are extensions of source. We have source energy. Come on. We are that. We are that. We've always been that. So we're just illuminating everything that, that doesn't align with that everything. Yeah. Let me let me know if y'all have any questions. Um, Because, I, like I said, I've been seeing a lot of this in the chats lately. A lot of us just struggling with relationships. And even with these karmic relationships and breakups, like, y'all, I I feel you. I know it takes a long time sometimes to get through that. It's a really big grief because once again, relationships intimately with our partners reflect the closest thing in relationship that we have to our parents. So these ones are very intimately. But I just want you to know that these soul contracts are not by happenstance. Like everything happens for a reason. And Although we might want it to be them so bad, although we might really, really, really have thought like they were the one, there's infinite possibilities and there's infinite potentials. And once again, nothing happens for no reason. If that was really the person for you, it would have been. And maybe it is, but it's just not for right now. But regardless, source makes no mistakes, y'all. Source makes no mistakes. So this might just be a season of, of alone time. This might be a season of dating ourselves. This might be why the breakup is coming up. You know, maybe that breakup was saving you. That breakup could have gone a very bad direction if you had stayed in it. When it comes to these breakups and relationships, that shadow work, y'all, that shadow work, really coming back to that shadow work, like, why do I feel like my whole life is being torn apart from this relationship? These attachments releasing these attachments with love will always be connected to these people but attachments will cause suffering within us attachments will really literally make us feel like we're losing a certain aspect of ourselves when it's impossible we're always connected and we are each other i give grace love and compassion to anybody dealing with any type of breakup whether it be family friend relationship and once again all you can do is be you. You being you is healing things. You know, you doing the work on yourself. You don't even have to set up family meetings or any of these things to heal. You being the example that there's another way is healing your family. That within itself is having them reflect. Your energy is infectious. And it might not seem like it all the time, but your energy is literally doing healing work to the whole house. So I want you to remember that, like, deeply. You are doing a good job. And the family is already healing because you chose this path for yourself, y'all. And once again, they might not be ready right this second, but best believe them, them glasses start to lift off. They're going to come to you. They're going to be like, wow, what you've been doing has been working and I'm interested. Or, wow, you were right. I'm sorry. Like, Because people are going to start to see once you don't allow certain things to trigger you, they're going to be like, why, 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 why are they so happy? Why does nothing bother them? Why are they floating through this experience like it's heaven on earth, y'all? My my family says that to me all the time. They're like, do you not see all the bad stuff that's going on in the media? Do you not see who's the politics? It's not I'm like, y'all, in my world, in my universe, everything is perfect and complete. It's bliss. I'm not I'm not giving five seconds of my energy to feed into anything that's going to cause me stress that has nothing to do with me. Truth be told, anyone running for politics, anything in the news has nothing to do with me and my direct experience right here, right now. I live in the now. So if something happens to come my way, I will deal with that as it comes. But in my world, all is perfect and complete. Yeah, I hope that gave clarity. Like I said, anybody that's in relationships right now, anybody that's Maneuvering through them, or anyone who just is desiring to build that deeper relationship with yourself, you know, getting quiet, turning off your phone, really getting to know yourself on the most intimate level. Like, why do I even do this? Why do I like this? 
Where did this stem from? This is where the real growth lies. This is where the real growth lies. <laughs> That's confirmation. Oh, th- th- oh, and like I got a yellow top on too. <laughs> no fun. <laughs> this is funny. I felt so sad and weak today, so I was really thinking about to join this. So thank you so much for that session. I mean, I feel not really better. I'm gonna cry again after, but yeah, I remember it on point things. So thank you for showing up. And I, honestly, I was gonna make a slideshow for all this, but I was like, no, nah, I'm just gonna channel. Like I'm just gonna feel the energy of the call and just channel because I realized that the best things, the best things, really are when you live in the present moment. And I, my highest desire is that you take the time today to pour into yourself and just, just be, just be, cut off all stimulation. Don't look at your phone. Don't look at the TV. Just, just be, just sit with yourself and allow the emotions to literally flow like the waves over your consciousness. Just be, that's the best thing you could do, Luca. Just be, embrace that beautiful sadness because it's divine. <laughs> Thank you. Oh, y'all, are, y'all are so cute. <laughs> Thank you for this class. It was very much needed. I don't feel bad for being myself. Please, please. Oh. If anybody wants to come and speak um, before I end it, you can too. Like I said, any questions at all, any tips, anything. My highest desire, once again, is that all of us are vibrating high, feeling the universal love that's flowing through any and everything and maneuvering through this experience with ease. Being able to see the higher perspective of it all. It's just a lesson on the line. Pushing us closer to the divine. <laughs> Y'all are so cute. <laughs> us. And then, yeah, when, I just want to touch on, on what she just said. She don't feel bad for being herself. Y'all, come on now. How are we going to attract what's meant for us if we're not being ourselves? Like, the more that we hide our emotions and the more that we really, like, don't express what we feel... We're literally going to attract people doing the same thing. And then we get frustrated because we're not experiencing intimacy on the level that we desire. But we're not even putting that intimacy out to attract. Ooh, she is beautiful. How about a screenshot? Then? Thank, oh, my God. Thank you for sharing. That was beautiful. But yeah. Like I said, once again, y'all, everything's energy. Everything is energy. You cannot skip past that, y'all. You can't skip past that. Everything's energy. So be the energy. Be that. Feel that. See that. I'm all reminded. That reminded you of me? Oh, stop. <laughs> no, you know what's funny? My favorite color is pink, too. So I'm not going to lie. You're kind of spot on with that. And you know I'm an ocean baby. Like, if you know me, like, truly intimately know me, like, I live in the ocean. I don't care. Like, I, I, I live in the ocean. That is my home. If I need any type of connection, best believe I'm going to be in that water. Um, <laughs> with them dolphins, like, come on now. That's that, uh, that, that, like, that, the alignment on that is, like, it's spot on. But thanks for class, amazing, captivating. I could tell, I love, I love the white hair. You know what it really is? Um, it's the, it's the, it's the, it's the Syrian in me. It's the, it's the deep, 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 deep down Syrian in me from quite a couple of lives ago. I swear, y'all, like, for me, I'm telling y'all, um, n- matter of fact, this is, like, a little off topic. I'm about to just, I'm about to just talk. <laughs> so, I know for me, tapping into past lives, I use that to work with my life now. So, for example, I'm aware that I had a past life on Sirius. I'm aware that I was a mermaid at one point, right? So I know, okay, water is very healing to me. Y'all, anytime my emotions rise, anytime I'm feeling anger, anytime I'm feeling sad, like, especially with fasting, because when you fast, those emotions purge, y'all. Those emotions purge. So the first thing I do, the first thing I do is get in the water. I Whether it be a lake, whether it be the ocean, whether it be the shower, whether it be the bath, like y'all, I'm planting my ass in that water and I'm not moving until until I'm connecting with my guys, until I feel better and it never fails. Like the water is the most cleansing element to me by far. Water is literally for purification. Like think about it, y'all. We didn't got bad times when we were little. Like water is so purifying. So anyone that is dealing with these emotions, like y'all go get in that water. Go get in that water. Please. <laughs> Please. <laughs> That's funny. Um, and I actually don't have a beach near me. 
<laughs> which sucks. But to be honest, like I mainly reside in Mexico anyway. I'm kind of just um visiting some family right now. So I'm like, okay, let me just be here. Let me be present. But yeah, best believe that water is calling me. My whole life I've been bottling up my emotions and I have to learn to express them. How to, how do you know the difference between complaining and telling your feelings? Okay, so I relate to this because I literally, like the sentence that was engraved into my um adolescent days was like shut up before I give you something to cry about like so I I really feel you on that one and the difference between complaining and telling your feelings so I'm gonna just put this put this here to be honest when you're talking to the right person there is no complaining if that makes sense so when you're truly expressing your feelings to somebody and getting intimate and vulnerable it's a very mutual connection and energy exchange you know, you're going to know because, you know, emotions are coming out. You might start to cry. You might start to, your body might start to tingle. You might start to shake. Like, you're going to feel the release, literally. Complaining is more you're going on by your day-to-day. And you say y'all could be at the grocery store or something, and you're just like, so say something happens to you, like, oh, they cut me off because they didn't want to hear me talk. Like, that's why I don't talk because I'm not heard. Nobody cares about what I have to say. So I feel like that's kind of the difference in complaining. It's like the energy behind it. So are you actually intimately, intentionally having a sit-down conversation where you're like, I need to express my feelings? And all of that can be really uncomfortable. It's very healing, especially for you if you dealt with this in childhood as well. And like I said, it can be so uncomfortable at first, but letting it out is like the biggest, like it's, it's releasing so much energy. So sitting down with somebody really just saying like, I need to express my feelings right now and I've been holding it in for a while. So are you are you in the energy to be able to have this conversation with me? And if they're taking that as complaining, I'm going to be honest, that, that, that's like a form of gaslighting. Because if you're intentionally saying, like, I need to release to you, I need to express my feelings. Now, it's one thing, like, you don't want to talk about the problem for days on days on days on days on days because we have to come to the solution, you know? Because you don't want to get stuck in that energy. You don't want to get stuck feeling like a victim because you're not a victim. You're not a victim. You went through this for a reason and it's shaping you to be able to open that throat chakra and it's shaped you into being able to speak in your truth and once you really get comfortable like girl I'm telling you like you gonna be you gonna be talking that shit (laughs) you're gonna be talking that shit okay but I would say that's the main difference like what is the conversation behind it and and are you are you portraying in like a victim mode so and at times it might come out because something triggers you, right? So say you're having a conversation with your parents and you don't feel heard or something. You might, it might come out as like a smart comment or something in that moment that might sound like complaining to someone else. But that's when you kind of have to take a deep breath and reflect back on yourself and be like, okay, I'm sorry. Like, no, don't say I'm sorry. Cause, and, then, and then there's how you feel. You don't have to pause about, about how you feel, but just saying to them like, okay, that came off wrong. What I really was just trying to express is that I still don't feel heard and safe to speak up. And it's bothering me because in this moment, I feel like you're not respecting my feelings. Like, did I answer your question? The intention behind what you're doing will set the tone for everything. I was about to say, I just want to get deeper into it, but like, <laughs> but yeah, y'all, y'all notice when you're complaining because it's coming from like a very, it's just coming from a different energy. Like, oh, th- th- this just, this just solidifies why I can't speak up this just solidifies why my voice doesn't matter this is why I don't speak up like stuff like that is telltale sign like okay this is bothering me let me fix the energy behind this because even the way we bring up things right so once again all of our feelings are valid and it's our birthright to speak our truth and to be able to communicate our feelings with people but it's not about what you do it's about how you do it so let me give an example say I am mad at Corinne because she made a comment about me and I didn't like it because it triggered an old wound in me, right? I could go about this two ways. I could say, well, I don't like her anyways. I don't know why you're talking when da-da-da, right? Or I could go about it in the way of, hey, can I please talk to you? And then we could have a conversation. And I could be like, you know, it really did hurt my feelings when you said that because it just made me feel like this and that, you know? So I just wanted to talk about it and I wanted to get a clear understanding of it and be able to come to an agreement with one another. So even how you do it, like you could go up to someone and be like, you're not listening to anything I'm saying. This is why I don't talk to you. This is why I never speak up for myself. Nothing matters. 
if you're in that energy, someone's not really going to want to communicate with you. Someone's not really going to want to hear what you actually have to say. You have to really, you know, just take those deep breaths and be like, y'all, even if the person that you're communicating with is very hard to communicate with and they lack compassion or just self-awareness, still just being able to go out to them the best that you can with no expectations and just being like, hey, so I really feel away right now and I don't want to. <laughs> Let's work this out because I'd rather us get along than bicker. I think that would make both of us feel better. And I think it's just a mis mis misunderstanding because once again, we're only, it's funny. It, it, all our arguing is, is just triggering wounds within each other, which once again, why we need each other. That's why relationships and connections are so important. Even if they blow up and they end, even if they're karmic, whatever it is, all we're doing is pushing each other back closer to each other. That's all it is. Even in the most healthy relationships, you might still get triggered. Y'all, you know how many times I get triggered in my own relationship? and It is healthy. And I'm like, oh, gosh, like, didn't know that still bothered me. Let me let me go. Let me go fix that. Let me go meditate. Let me go. Let me go pour into my cup. So it doesn't even have to be like an unhealthy communication or bond for those triggers to come out. Triggers are going to come out anywhere in anything triggers could come out as you're watching the show and like i said those triggers aren't always going to come out because once you heal like the more you heal but i mean healing is layers on layers on layers like just even think about the age that you're in right now so 20 you're going through 20 years of, of programming or if we're going through 30 40 50 you're going through 30 40 50 and even deeper y'all be thinking about that even deeper i'm like y'all now I know my past life. So am I healing? Am I healing something from my past life now? Like, is that what's coming up? Because damn, thought thought I got that on this lifetime. Maybe this isn't even from this this rodeo. So yeah, oh my God, healing just goes deep. But once again, like healing is not the purpose of our life. And we're not always going to be on this healing path. This is just a small, medium proportion. Like not ascension is the goal. Mastering our emotions is the goal. And we are going to get to a point where it's like, oh. Life is bliss. I'm walking through this experience with ease, with ease, like with, with ease, straight ease. And yeah, things will always come up where we'll feel emotions, but it's like, it's not like, oh, I have to drop down and do shadow work. Like once you do shadow work around something, a lot of times and you feel like you healed that, let it go. Because we can get stuck in the cycle of, of constantly being addicted to that feeling and being addicted to that suffering and that trauma. If we keep going back to the same shadow work over and over and over and over and over again, you're staying in that loop. So you really do have to be careful and very aware, even with, with this whole healing. Because you can, like I said, you can find yourself just reliving it over and over again when... That's exactly what we're not trying to do. And people can get addicted to the healing cycle. I've, I've seen that too. People can get addicted to the healing cycle because it's reaffirming those same triggers and emotions. Have y'all experienced that within your journey? I've been seeing a lot of that. The healing cycle. Yeah. Yeah. Like, nah, we're here to enjoy, to live this experience. Like, literally. Like, y'all, and that's, I mean, this really isn't even about relationships anymore. It's just we're staying on and talking at this point. But, you know, one thing I want to, to really say is, like, this experience is an experience. This is one small experience within the trillion infinite ones that we have. So, like, really, don't take this shit so seriously. And that's not to say, like, nothing matters. Because, once again, there's two things of energy behind it. Like, oh, nothing matters. And I've been doing things. Not be in the energy of, oh, nothing, bro, nothing matters. I'm going to I'm gonna express myself. I'm going to do whatever I want to do. I'm going to have fun. I'm not going to take this so seriously. I'm not going to plan my whole 50, 50 years ahead of me. Nah, I'm going to flow. I'm going to be in the present moment. I'm going to travel the world. I'm just going to be, like, really just not taking life so, so, so seriously. That's what we got taught to do. Like, mm, 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 having fun. This is so temporary. It, it's infinite, but it's temporary. This vessel is temporary. So, yeah, I'm going to live it up in this vessel. I'm not going to spend all my day stressing about how I'm going to. Like, yo, I want y'all to really, like, let's, let's just think about this. Because we are in a new generation and a new awareness. And I feel like, um, at least for my generation, I don't know that. I don't know the age groups on this call. But for mine, right, I'm 20. 20. Y'all, my, my, my generation is like, oh, we're not working 9 to 5, baby. That don't resonate. And I know our parents y'all they were they they're probably still to this day of getting gray hair stressing like how am i gonna get retirement for 1k like no 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 no, no. <laughs> y'all 
literally, we're not going to live life in a stressful state 24-7. This is an experience to enjoy, okay? I want y'all to just take life with a grain of salt. Like, it's not meant to be taken so seriously. I found out that a lot of my securities and what I have to heal in this life is stuff I need to heal. Yeah. Okay. That's kind of crazy because, like, oh, my God. The way that past life trauma will keep repeating until you become aware of it. Like, y'all, I'm going to be so honest with you. Let me tell y'all. You want to know why I picked the womb so bad? Like, truly? But that, that shit comes from a past life. Like, I, I on everything. That shit comes from a deep, deep past life. Like, I, that, my womb took me out last time I was on Earth. And I was on Earth not that long ago. Like, literally not that long ago. And so, I started experiencing so much trauma and stuff in my womb in this lifetime. And then boom, 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 boom. I found out and I was like, oh my God, everything's connected. This is it. This ends here. <laughs> and this is why I'm so passionate about it. Because I'm like, bro, I have experience in this. Like, oh, I done felt a lot of it. <laughs> For some time now. For some time. So, yeah, even those past life memories, like, it, it does, yes. Yeah, a lot of what we heal is just repeating. And that's why it is so beautiful, though, because think about it, y'all. We're healing now. We're not just healing, like, this, this, this. We're healing. We're healing generations. That's powerful. Even to be in this awareness of, like, yeah, I did that. Like, congratulate yourselves, literally. Y'all are so smart. We're so smart. Um, I'm realizing I need to have more fun. Yeah, like, y'all, okay, really, if y'all um, if y'all follow me, like, really know, like, the womb is something I'm very passionate about, and I am going to be a doula. So, like, it's something I'm touching heavily on eventually. But, like, right now, like, yeah, inner child healing, like, I'm, inner child healing is, like, all my Instagram about all that because everything starts in childhood. And when you, like, life was so good in childhood because we knew how to be present. Like, our childhoods were so glorified simply due to the fact because we were present because we were in that hypnotic um, meditative theta brainwaves. Like, and this is, once again, we can tap back into this daily. So living through the life and lens of your inner child is heaven. That is the bliss that we all search for. It's like we always say we miss our childhood days and wish, we wish we could be a childhood again, child again, but we can and we are. Like our inner child went nowhere. Our inner child was right here. So it's never too late. Like you are that. You are that. So Y'all, like, you anyway, feel like you're taking life too seriously. Tap into the inner child. What did you do as a child? Oh, you like to run outside in circles and, and hop in the mud? Then go do that. Go do that. That well, that right there, you'll be like, oh, yeah, life, life is fun. I can't lie. Life is fun. <laughs> let me stop stressing about that little job I got to go to, a little matrix job. Like, let me go outside and play, play in the mud. And you'll just see, like, yeah, like, life's worth living. <laughs> the fairies are definitely around. Y'all, my fairies, what? Like every call, every uh, every day. I'm not gonna lie. <laughs> they be they be making me laugh so much. I'm not gonna lie. Like I know when the when the phase are around. Like I know when the phase are around. I feel like the healing we do in our current life will give us. Yep, Gen Z don't fuck with the regular. <laughs> Yo, Gen Z, we're like the rebels. Like we're like, yeah, we're not doing anything you tell us to. Ha, try again. Try again. But I think it's beautiful because look at the way stuff is um changing. Stuff is being rewritten. I think it's so divine the way Earth is headed, y'all. Like, this experience is only going to get so much better and better and better because we're just getting smarter and smarter and smarter. And then think about the kids that we're having. Like, we're birthing straight star seeds. Imagine what our kids are going to do. Come on now. Look at what we're doing. And then just think about what our kids are going to do. That's, like... Y'all, my babies are going to be, like, the astral presence. <laughs> I just been thinking about that, like, yo. And even the way that we can just bring. Wait, what? She just said a wasp was a fairy shapeshifter. I kid you not. There's been a wasp in my... Wait, can you please elaborate on that, Mary? I want you to elaborate on that, because this whole call, there's been a wasp flying in my room, and it's literally still here. And honestly, I was questioning how it even got in but... It's, yeah, elaborate on that for me. Look, actually, let me know. No, no, I'm like, hmm, what are you actually doing in here? Because, y'all, I don't be having wasps just fly in my room. Mm -mm, mm -mm. Yeah, okay, so for the moms, like, yeah, spending time with your child, like, that's the quickest, like, portal within itself. Like, your child is still in that energy. Your child is still, like, like, yeah, like, your child is your biggest teacher. Your child is, like, showing you in a way how to be honestly think about it they haven't gone through so much programming and stuff like they're so pure 
and innocent and bliss. Like, well, yeah, the face definitely shapeshifted because I'm mean, there's a fat ass wasp in my room. That's so funny. <laughs> that, yeah, not for real. I I had a fake come to all. Oh, watch. As soon as I end the call, it's probably going to leave, too. I still think my daughter is some kind of angel or something here on Earth. She's literally, she's probably an Earth angel, honestly. She's probably um an Earth angel, for sure. Like, for sure. Look at her mother. Her mother is that girl. You are that girl. Like, come on now. You know you birthed royalty. You know you gave birth to a to a young to a young powerful seed. Come on, you already know she's an angel. <laughs> I was scared to have children in the future, future, but angel made me think about it. Okay, so with children, guys, like we gonna we gonna touch on slight rumors though before I end the call. Okay, so I feel like uh, hold on. Give me a so when it comes to having kids, right, bro? Truth be told, this was my biggest fear as a woman. <laughs> like majority of my life because i'm sitting here like all right so you're telling me i have to go through nine months of pain then i have to push it out of me then i have to recover then it's gonna hurt to use the bathroom then then i have to go through the the postpartum depression then what if my what if my baby like, leaves me like y'all all these thoughts went through my head my whole life and then i realized like really taking a step back really taking a step back and doing womb healing and in learning about the womb learning about ancient ways our ancestors treated the womb and children i was like oh birth is not as like as as it's supposed to be for one i would never have birth in a in a hospital once again because the, the position that you're in makes it painful you're not even supposed to be in the position that they have you in one two the best thing to be in water in water think about it water you think flow the baby can flow like water burst boom and to be honest i'm gonna have to <laughs> i'm gonna have to teach a class about like like this whole concept one day because i am gonna be a doula but y'all um even the the medications that they give you know depending on um i mean i really don't see race anymore just because i see the oneness but you know our whole world doesn't see that so even the race that you are like if you're a certain color they're going to treat you so poorly you know the american hospitals get paid more if they if you have a c-section so that's why they push c-sections onto you because you get paid more and last but not least the one reason not the one reason but like the main reason not main sorry the you know why i love 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 talking about birth and why i want to give birth so bad Y'all, you know what? You know you can have an orgasm and literally, like, leave this realm as you give birth. And to be honest, if anyone's interested, like, I can actually show y'all. I have videos. Like, there's literally videos where, okay, think about this. How is a baby made? A baby is made through an orgasm, okay? Lots of love being combined. <clears throat> orgasm so why wouldn't a baby come out in the same way why wouldn't it come out in the same way so yeah birth should be you know you got your husband you got your you got your divine counterpart hugging up on you rubbing them shoulders touching on you kissing on you setting the tone y'all should have candles y'all should have rose petals y'all should have some nice intimate music playing and yeah doing breath work doing the right techniques that your doula should be guiding you through not being on this heavy medication, like, y'all, orgasmic birth is the original birth. I swear to you. I swear to you. We're supposed to be having orgasms. The, probably the biggest orgasm you've ever had in your life is when you'll give birth. Think about that. They don't tell you that, though. They don't tell you that, though. They don't tell you that, though. Mm -mm. Mm -hmm. They don't tell you that, though. They tell you that you got to get a thing stabbed in your back, and it's going to be, yes, yes, y'all, yes. Like, I can't make this up. Like, I'm not going to lie. It's too graphic to send in here just because I know that, like, some people don't want to see that. Like, I'm not going to lie. Some people don't like seeing birth. Me, personally, I'm a doula, so uh, I love watching people give birth. I think it's the most divine thing ever. It's a whole being coming into this realm through a portal. Like, come on. Me personally, that's my cup of tea. But yeah, y'all, like you can go on YouTube and, and search up like orgasmic birth and, and there's ladies like moaning, like smiles on their face, eyes rolling back and, 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 and pure bliss. 
it's a pure bliss, y'all. So this is why I actually can't wait to give birth because I know that, like, boom. I know that my, um, I know that my diet, my diet is going to be extremely freaking healthy. Like, I'm already healthy as hell. Like, really, I eat all raw. And I fast more days than I eat, more hours than I eat. So, for one, you having a healthy diet. Two, you doing squats every day. You really moving your temple. You getting in nature. You genuinely just taking care. Oh my gosh, that was coming. <laughs> you taking care of yourself. Like literally, you taking care of yourself in your pregnancy and having the right doula by your side the whole time. Y'all, your pregnancy is going to be the most, I don't care. It's going to be the most funnest thing ever. And that's not to say, like, yeah, you're not going to hurt because, come on now, like, you have a whole being inside of you. So you're going to stretch. You know, you're going to feel things you never felt. But once again, let's compare it to someone who doesn't have a doula, who's going through the the hospital, who's going through a, the American sad diet, who who just has no awareness of an orgasmic birth, who who gets the 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 shots that they give like it's it's who lays who lays in the position like it's a whole different experience and honestly turning pain into pleasure is what we're here to do and this wasp is coming real close to me but yeah yeah y'all y'all i'm telling you orgasmic birth go ahead if you're really interested go ahead and hop on google and search it up and you're gonna see exactly what i'm talking about y'all like and and babies y'all Babies are the biggest spirit guides, in my opinion. Like, that's your, like, you want to heal? Oh, oh, go ahead and look at your child. Hmm. How do they act? <laughs> what do they do? And even, like I said, we're star seeds. Y'all, we're star seeds having these babies. The, the, the beings that we're going to lay down and have a baby with. Come on now. Let's, let's think about y'all energy vibration. Even how y'all bring the baby into this world, right? Some cosmic sex, boom. That baby is born. I'm sorry. I'm not I'm not embarrassed to say I'm not ashamed to say it. Like we are literally now our parents' parents. So yeah, when I had babies, oh yeah, let me step back. <laughs> You're my teacher. Yeah, I'm gonna nurture you, I'm gonna take care of you, I'm gonna I'm gonna be a mom, provide everything I need for you. My, but you baby, you can buy teach me more than I can teach you at this point. You are way more connected to that right now. Yeah. Uh, you, you 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 just came from the cosmos like you just came from the cosmos you didn't go through the programming i went through you didn't go through the school system you didn't eat the bullshit for 18 years you didn't have to do none of that you are pure bliss and yeah i'm not feeding my kids formula and, and bullshit food like i just know my my kids are going to be my my parents like literally you know, it's such a beautiful, energetic exchange. Like, my kids are going to be my biggest teachers, literally. I'm here to support your dreams and your needs and, and love you and do all that. But, like, baby, the universe is teaching me lessons and I'm enrolling. Like, te- yeah, I'm, so I'm, I'm very much going to be the teacher to my child just as much as I'm going to be the student. Like, I think it's so divine. Like, I, I, to the, uh, I think it's so divine. Like, Y'all, and really, for the goddesses, right? Like, we have a womb. Like, we have a portal. Like, I mean, don't get me wrong. There's nothing wrong with not giving birth. Like, that's not everyone's desire. There's nothing wrong with that. Because free will. Like, that just might not be the path that you chose to have babies. And nothing's wrong with that. But you have a womb. That's a gift, okay? That's a gift right there. You have a portal. So I just feel like, would you really choose a portal if you didn't want to bring a child into this realm? And a lot of times when we don't want kids, I feel like it stems from trauma because we might have had to raise our siblings or even just the dynamic of trauma, right? Because once again, we are very intentional about this experience. Like we choose everything. We chose to be a divine feminine. We chose to be a divine masculine. So it's like, okay, um, I have a womb. So <laughs> let me put this joint to work. <laughs> I don't know. I, I can't say too much because, you know, I haven't even had one yet. But, like, y'all, I think I could go on about not. <laughs> like, I, I want to build a village. I do. I do. I do. So, let me read these. I've been chatting. Um, I wish, honestly, I could have been your doula. I'm still not even ready. Um, cause Right now, I'm working on a really big project that I have to finish. Yeah, it should be coming out in like, I don't know, maybe maybe in a month or two, depending on how fast I get to work. But after that project, like after that project, I got one more bigger project that's like working with people more intimately, like more coaching um, that I'm putting together. But after, after my coaching, my coaching business is all set up. Cool. Feel me? Yeah, I'm, I'm about to um, 
get my doula, my doula, uh, my doula certifications and really start like training with people. Which, yeah, I can't wait to start helping people give birth and like being being a pregnant woman's best friend. Like that sisterhood, we need that. Like we need that the most. So having a doula is like uh, a best friend, literally the most intimate, the most intimate best friend. All right, so even more excited to give birth now. Mm, so I just love talking about it. I wish I could do this with my neighbor's dog. The bark dogs with me going through hell. Babies are many. Yeah, they are many elders. I realized something because I tried to do it a fly. But click, okay. okay, wait, hold on. Okay, hi, what are you supposed to do? What are you supposed to feed babies? Milk? Like milk? Like our, our breast milk, y'all? Like our our babies are not supposed to take formula. Like it actually, there's brain studies that show like babies who take formula, their IQ levels drop down like crazy. Their development, like Babies who are given formula are really coming out a lot more. I don't really know what the word I want to use is. They're coming out a lot more like pure. I'll say pure. And to be honest, um, I've actually been learning about ways to continue on our formula. Like even after the babies, like, 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 like our breast can actually produce milk, like, like keep producing it. And me personally, I'm doing that. Like, I want my baby to drink my best breast milk for a long time because once again, what's more pure than that? Like it's coming from it's coming from your mother and you are source. It's coming straight from source. I trust that more than I trust any 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 other milk, anything. But it really like that topic goes deep because okay, at a certain age they can start to eat more things. They can, you know, their teeth and stuff like that. So that's really like that's like a deep question that goes different ways. But like, yeah, babies are really not supposed to have that formula. They, they need their mama's breast milk. So, and if you could just breastfeed as long as you can. And you don't have to, you know, do it for years and stuff. But really do it while they need it. Because that formula is only hurting them. It's man-made. Think about it. The baby's so pure. It's so pure. You want it You want it to take your fluids and liquids. Like, you don't want anything man-made going into that baby. Why do they turn bratty? Kids only do with... Kids literally can only reflect what they see. So, they're taking on the, the behavior of the shows they're watching. The people at pre-K. They're taking on the behavior of what their parents are. So, literally. A baby can only do what they say. My best friend's little brother. Like, I, I, I can't make this up. But when I play with him, I could be like... I could be like, boom, for the next week, he'll go. Like, babies do what they see. The brightness is coming from what, what they're being shown. It's coming from what they're being taught. That's why I say kids are your biggest teachers. You don't like the way your kid's talking, but check your own voice because they got it from you. And yeah, that is real sisterhood. I'll call you when I decide. <laughs> no, nah, for real. And honestly, you already know my energy. Like, you already have a feeling for it. So that's why, like, with doulas, right? Like, for me personally, when I start, taking clients I don't even like calling them clients because like you're not my client you're my you're my tribe you're my sister so when I start helping my sisters yeah like prior to even working with them like yeah I, I want to go on like a date with them first and like spend the day together and even just see if our energy aligns with each other because this is your most intimate experience this is this is your life-changing event your pregnancy your birth is something you'll never ever forget like this is literally one of the biggest parts of your journey so it's like i want to see if our energy aligns and if we even make a good match together because that's the most important that your pregnancy goes exactly as it should be and it's important that you even like just have a relationship with me even outside of what i'm doing for you because it's not it's not even about the money it's not about the service i'm doing for you it's about the connection once again because it all comes down to relationship. Like, yeah, I'm helping you. But now nah, I I'm, I'm need that connection with you just as much as you need it with me. Because I need to be able to help you in the deepest level. And everything's energy at the end of the day, you know? Like, if that energy's not aligning, <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> Is there a class how to become a doula? All right, so it's kind of weird, if I'm going to be honest. You actually don't even need to be certified. But me personally, I wouldn't dare, dare, dare 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 give a birth without being certified just because i want to know every single thing possible to learn like i think that it should be required to have a certification because you're dealing with life or death like if you do something wrong you could potentially harm their baby and oh <laughs> i'm sorry but i don't think there's any um worse like I would oh my gosh like it, it, you guys think about it like I feel like it's the same as a surgeon like every time they're doing operation you know that's the life on the table like that's risky and it's the same thing with a doula like I'm helping you bring this being into this dimension 
and you know we're working with your womb the most sensitive space like i don't want to possibly mess up anything to cause future potential issues for your baby nor cause an emergency to happen in that moment me personally i'm gonna get certified like probably twice because i want to literally learn like the ins and outs of everything and i already have a lot of knowledge towards the womb but like so i already know like okay i, I have a lot of awareness and experience but like nah want to like get double certified because baby i'm not playing about that i'm not playing about that i'm not gonna ruin somebody's life <laughs> sorry not me <laughs> i'm not gonna be the one that 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 put that trauma on you like uh, get somebody else <laughs> so yeah i think i want to get certified like once in the usa and then i actually want to go to mexico and like actually like learn with like the medicine woman and like the doulas who've been doing this their whole life and stuff like that and get like hands-on experience like i want to at least be at a, a few a big handful of births before i even dare do my own because once again if i'm not 100 percent confident baby i'm not doing it I'm not doing it. Sorry. My confidence need to be on a, on a 110, 111 for that one. Mm-mm. 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 I'm, not even, I'm playing with someone's life, y'all. Like, come on now. This is a being. This is sacred and, and scary. Scary. <laughs> scary. <laughs> I'm geeking. <giga. laughs> so, yeah, there's so many classes. That, like, I've already been looking into it, and I think I found, like, where I want to do it first but like I said y'all like I'm working on a really big project right now that is taking a lot of energy out of me so I'm like yeah I'm not even gonna dare start something else until that's finished like when this is finished it's gonna be like a breath of fresh air and then boom yeah like I said I just want to start working with people really actually like coaching people um I'm putting together like I think it's gonna be for all women to be honest like I was gonna do men but like Nah, I, I love I love the man, but you know, I like I said, that sisterhood is really needed. So I'm gonna I'm working on putting together like a big like coaching program where we can meet weekly, you know, just that divine sisterhood, but just <laughs> weekly, you know, all that good stuff. There's gonna be stuff in the portal, stuff to learn from, guides, guidances, all that good stuff. So that's what I'm working on. Um after which is gonna take some time because like it's a lot of videos to sit down and record to for people to go look back at it's a lot of you know things to just provide in the in the in the program for people journals stuff like that like I really want to make it like a one like nah I'm not gonna half-ass this shit like nah I'm, I'm gonna make this like Barbie school I'm gonna make this like Barbie school <laughs> I'm still doing my fasting y'all y'all wanna know something okay so <laughs> I'm not gonna lie I'm doing a 30-day fruit fast. I broke it. Like, I was, like, seven days in. I was, like, seven days in. But to be honest, like, I, I give myself grace because I chose to simply because, um, okay, so my, my grandfather has cancer, and he's about to start chemo. And my brother's in town, and he lives in California. And so, like, this was probably the last time we were all going to get together. And, like, they wanted to have a big dinner, and they wanted to eat, um, like, Mexican food, like tostadas and stuff. And literally, they know how strict my diet is. And they went out their way to, like, actually cook. Like, like they use, like, healthy oils for, for my beans. And they cut me off, like, a bunch of vegetables so I can still eat it with them. And I was like, I'd be so wrong. It'd be like, I'm not eating. <laughs> and because it was probably going to be the last time that we all got to eat together on this earth. So I was like, all right, I'm not going to, like, I'm not going to do that. So, yeah, I went ahead and I fucked me up some tostadas y'all like i i went crazy on the tostadas uh, so yeah I, i'm not mad at myself like i give myself grace like regardless that 30-day fruit fast is still being done because if i say i'm gonna do something i'm gonna do it <laughs> point blank period right they'll probably be like you're so ungrateful like they literally would probably like i would have really hurt somebody's feelings and yeah they done made a whole bowl guacamole i was like so ever since um that was a couple days ago and we had leftovers and (laughs) i actually haven't eaten all day today i don't know if i'm i I don't know i might just not eat anything today start tomorrow i don't know y'all regardless it's getting done though the way i am is like i feel like the more i plan towards it the harder it is like let me just do it and not like put intention behind it but don't be like like when i track it i feel like it's worse you know it's worse. And I'm sorry. I mean, I am Mexican, but baby, that Mexican food, like, don't put that shit around me. Come on now. Don't put that shit around me. Like, come on. Come on. Come on. That's my favorite food. Like, don't play with me. Don't play with me. Don't 
Like, I get down with food, but come on, Mexican food? Like, now we're talking heaven on earth. But yeah, anyway, so after these, after these two projects coming up, um, I'm going to start working on my dealership. Um, honestly, it's probably going to wait till next year. Just because, like, I, I really spend usually, I, I usually travel, like, 24-7. And I've been sat down for a while. And I'm ready to travel again. So I'm probably going to give myself that leisure and that time to ground with, like, the community I'm creating. And just spend a couple months, you know, focusing on that and putting my heart to that. And then after that, you know, once it's, like, more steady, then, yeah, I'm going to get going on that dealership. Selling Yoni themes and stuff. You just got to act like it's day one. Yeah, to be honest, I want someone to do this 30-day fruit fast with me, too. Like, 30 days, y'all. I've done so many fruit fellas. Never 30 days. Never 30 days. And, yeah, part of me wants a little friend to do it with, just for the F of it. Or maybe I can convince Ski. I don't know, though. Maybe I can convince Ski. But I feel like he won't fold. <laughs> And I'm going to be so mad if he falls because I'm like, bro, you're in my face. Like, I actually see him in person intimately. Like, if I'm doing it with someone else, like, you know, on the internet, it's like, okay, if you fold, it's still going to be like, oh, damn, they fold it. But it's like, I'm not seeing you eat in front of my face. Like, I'd have to see him eat in front of my face. That's like, don't disrespect me. <laughs> we end up together and you eat in my face. Not to say he will do that, but 30 days. Really? Okay. Like, for real? Like, really? <laughs> for real? Like, you actually do it? <laughs> Best thing in a Mexican house, me. Oh, okay. Let me tell you something. So when I was in my dad's house, so my dad's a Mexican one. Like I was in Tijuana with my dad. Like bro, I'm not gonna lie. He used to cuss me out. Like he used to be like, "You have to eat. Like you're gonna, like you're gonna die. You're not healthy. What are you doing? Eat." And then yeah, he tried to tell me he was like, "Yeah, if you're gonna live here, you have to eat meat once a week." I looked at him like he had eight heads, and you know what I did? I booked me a flight and I got up out of there. I done left that house because you're not going to tell me what I'm putting in my temple just because you don't understand my journey. And then you're going to tell me I can't fast. Like, I had to, like, sneak fast, y'all. Like, I had to lie. Like, oh, did you eat today? I'm like, yeah, what'd you eat? I don't even like lying. Like, I don't lie. I'm so, I don't, I'm not a liar. So I'd be like, all right, fine. And then I'll get yelled at. And I'm like, this is some bullshit. I'm not dealing with this. <laughs> but I got up out of there. So, I'm gonna, yeah, let's text after this. Do fruit fest too. I thought about one eventually doing a juice fest. I just need to find some good fruit. Maybe being like, what's today, Wednesday? Yeah, today's Wednesday. To be honest, it's hard for me too because, like, I just started, I haven't worked in over a year. I just started working again at a restaurant. So I'm working with food. I'm working with food. I'm a server. I carry food. I talk about food. But I'm a G and I'm still going to do it because this job is temporary. It's the last matrix, though. That's the, if I can get through that, well, I can get through anything. Like, come on now. I can do anything. So, let's, let's, we should all definitely do a little fruit, fruit fest together. That would even bring us closer, closer together. Because those emotions are going to purge, you know, let out some emotions together. Talk about it a little bit. Figure out why we're so damn addicted to food. Because it's really just those underlying emotions that the food, that the comfort that food gives us. So, yeah. We can definitely all do it together. That'd be so fun. So fun. Yeah, am I, am I, am I like, um... In my community, I'm gonna gonna I'm in the work of creating like oh yeah we're doing monthly detoxes together like no exception. I mean of course you don't have to do it like I'm not gonna be oh you have to do it like I can't control you but definitely setting time aside to do detoxes together, journal prompts around it, check ins with each other, accountability posts, put some recipes that some little fruit recipe like smoothie bowls in there for us to all create together. To be honest, oh no, I face them in here. I said I think she she left. She, she's her ass is still in here. Monthly detox sounds great. Yeah, seriously, it's so important really to be doing monthly detoxes. Like you don't have to. Um, I feel like this experience is all about like I said, fun. Like free will do what you please literally do do what works best for you because the same diet doesn't work best for everybody so like i'm not the one to be like yeah you should stick on my diet because it's amazing like i mean it works for me but hey that might not work for you so i just tell everybody like yeah i don't care what you eat just go ahead and do some monthly detoxes because if you're eating regardless you need to get clean what's the main emotion that was coming up when you were fasting like literally being uncomfortable like just like honestly anger like all honesty so much anger came up and i used to have really bad anger issues when i was younger like and 
I knew it was anger because I just wanted a chip. Like, I didn't, I, like, I had so much fruit I could eat, but I was like, no, F fruit. And I, fruit is my favorite food. So that's how I knew it was coming from anger and comfort because I wanted to crunch. I wanted something that was like, like, I was angry. So I wanted salt. I wanted crunch. Yeah, I was just so angry. Like, like angry. Like, it was just anger. Irritation and anger. And I was like, ugh. So, you know, I sat down. I was like, all right, Ariana, why are we angry? What are we holding on to that's, that's making us angry? Because, <laughs> like I said, food is a comfort. And every time I get angry, I would just do some yoga or I meditate or I just run. Honestly, running actually helped me a lot. I would run. And then every time I'd be like, oh, she's not hungry anymore. And I'm not. All I had to do was run. So it's like we feed ourselves in different ways. It's like food just stimulates that part of our brain the same way that like drugs literally does and that comfort. It Honestly, I feel like fasting gets easier once you just start to do more research about like our connection with food, like what ways it stimulates our brain, um, the emotions that literally are lied behind our cravings, which I literally pulled out the book to read to y'all the last call and didn't find it. I'm going to try and find it and just send a picture of it in the group chat eventually. But yeah, I know off the top of my head, like, yeah, if you're craving love that heart shock really like, sweets and that was my like i i, I don't I, thank goodness i i like you know i cleanse myself and my heart shock was just busting wide open i found that love within myself so i don't crave that anymore but like when i first transitioned to a plant-based diet over a year ago like i couldn't let go of the, the sweets like i didn't care about the losing the meat or any of that like it was that ice cream it was those donuts it was the churros it was the cookies it was the pumpkin cake like it was just the sweets all i wanted was sugar and sugar literally is the biggest addiction ever like that's the hardest shit to get off of i don't care what anyone says i've never done no cocaine or none of that shit but i don't care what anyone says that sugar that sugar is the biggest drug that you could get i know that has to do with love and then yeah like literally like salt and crunch like this crunch has to do with anger there's more like i said i'm gonna try and find it in the book that i have in a little bit a little bit a little bit well, let me know if y'all have any more questions i'll probably stay on for like to like 2 15 if anything um but yeah i got some work to do and i need to go outside i'm i'm just looking at the sun i'm like i really wanted to do my call outside but last time my phone a because it overheated or b I'm, y'all spitting i was talking that shit and i don't think certain beings wanted me to talk my shit um sugar triggers the brain more than cocaine yeah see like sugar is like the legit biggest drug legit biggest drug so yeah we're definitely all well um we can talk more about doing fruit fast together even juice too yeah juice is amazing i, I would say the first with juicing it's a lot more intense a juice fast than fruit fasting like to be honest i actually do want to do a juice fast again because i definitely avoid it simply due to the simply due to the fact that sometimes that like it's not okay when you do a juice fast it's deeper than just the crunch you just want to chew something and like yeah with juicing you can't chew anything it's just liquid so like even the aspect of like that you can still get with fruit like that was my heart that's my hardest challenges that i face when i do juice juice fast like i just want to I just want to chew. I just want to chew. So, yeah. Juice fasts are definitely, I would say, if I'm going to be honest, if anybody was trying to heal a disease, like juice fast, like fruit, yeah, but juice fast. Our bodies really take liquid in the best. All, everything that we eat, we take like the like the liquid out of it. And um, the what we poop out is like the, the scrappings of the stuff that we chew. So when you're doing juice fast, you'll see like you don't really have to use the bathroom. Like you're, after you really cleanse your body and stuff, you're not using the number two anymore. And you're not, um, you feel so much lighter and there's so much more energy because your body doesn't have to take so much energy to break down all the food that you're, that you're, that your stomach's holding so like that energy can be used in different ways so you have so much more energy on a juice fast it definitely cleanses you way more too like any fast you do is going to cleanse you but like a juice fast like i remember my mom did her first juice fast and she was so scared of doing it after because she was throwing up and i was like no it's good and she was like no i don't like this but she needed that like she her body needed that so juice fasting will cleanse you the fastest i swear to you well dry fasting but that's a whole different topic and that's not something you should just like dive into like mm, definitely say master like fruit and juice fast and stuff before just trying to dry fast good dry fast bro dry fasting is so intense like that's the quickest way to humble my ego i kid you not 
I kid you not. That is the quickest way to humble me. I'm like, all right, you win. Um, I'm going to be honest. I don't chew gum anymore because, I mean, maybe they have a healthy con. I don't know. But I just know, like, the stuff they put in gum. I'm just like, y'all can't. I can't have anything. <laughs> like, y'all be sneaking stuff in everything. So, yeah, gum, I don't eat anymore. And I don't know, like. Just thinking about it now, like, I feel like a low-key pie does something to your teeth. Just think how sticky and stuff it is. I don't know. I haven't really done that, like, deep research in the gum. I stopped eating. Like, I really stopped over a year ago. And it's funny. I never really even thought about it, too. Just said that. I would definitely just say, like, like look at the ingredients, though. Because, like I said, they be putting stuff in everything. I'm really being called to do a juice fast. But I don't have the tools to. Okay, so, honestly, I will say, like, I have a juicer. And I don't use it. Like, um, juicing actually takes up a lot of time. Like, it's very fun. And it's a very great way to connect with your food. But it takes up hours and the cleaning process can be big. And you really need to make sure you have a good juicer because if a lot of pulp is coming out, you're not getting all of the the nutrients and stuff. Like you can actually end up like just wasting a lot of fruit. So I would say like really with juicing, like yeah, high quality juicer is so important in making that investment. But to be honest, even with myself, like if I were to do a juice fast right now, which I probably will soon, I would probably just get some, like, I would probably buy some juice. Like, there's actually companies that would do, like, five-day juice challenges. They'll send you, like, three or four a day. And it's it's going to be probably, like, a couple, like, at least two, three hundred probably. But to be told, like, it adds up to what you pay at the grocery store anyways because it takes a lot of fruit to juice, like, you know, days worth of juice. So, like, me personally, just because... I'm somewhat lazy right now because I don't have all the time on my hands that I want to. I'm working on a lot right now and just working in general. I would probably just order it from a safe company and just make sure that the company, like the only ingredients are the fruit. There's no added anything. Juicing is an amazing way to connect with your food and it's just a beautiful experience. But like I said, time. If, if you don't have a lot of time on your hands and it's very tedious, then definitely I would order from somewhere. Yeah, yeah. And it's funny. Like, our bodies, honestly, like, you'll kind of get led to intermediate fasting. Like, I really, I'm at a point where, like, yeah, I'm not eating unless I'm hungry. And, like, yeah, sometimes I'll go a whole day and not even eating. And then I'm like, I'm just eating with something with small little thing. And, like, it's just, yeah, you'll see. Like, I'm sure you realize it. But you just have so much more energy. Like, it just feels so much better. But I love y'all. Oh my gosh. Another beautiful call. Thank you for listening to my my vessel express itself through my channeling. Thank you for allowing me to be a vessel of guidance to you all. Thank you all for this co-creation. For the love. I feel the love. I feel the love so, so heavy. Definitely going to play my sound after this. But yeah, I hope that you guys all took something away from this class and that our journeys within our own self-love gets even deeper after this one. You know, my my line is always available to y'all. I might not answer quick, but <laughs> you can always text me. Um, yeah, you guys have a beautiful day, okay? I love you so much. Make sure to go out in nature today. Set your intentions and come on, got them spirit guides. Like, I'm actually, I actually should have said that on the call. Like, when I was mentioning how we're not alone, like, y'all, spirit guides and our ancestors really, 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 really want to help us. Like, they really want to connect. They really want to connect, but they cannot go against your free will. They cannot come and interfere with your journey. You have to ask, you have to open that door to communication, and you have to be patient and what's the word um open like open to the different like ways that they can connect because it's not always gonna be like so spot on if that makes sense like sometimes you gotta use discernment like the butterflies girl your spirit guys is around you like stuff like that like just be open to receiving and, and just start to notice things that, oh butterflies are coming around me more like oh i'm starting to hear this like i'm starting to hear ear ringing like you know pay attention to these things because they want to connect and Literally, you can't even be alone if you wanted to. <laughs> even if you wanted some privacy, oh, they're not going nowhere. They're always here. <laughs> they're with you. Yeah, connect to those ancestors and those spirit guys, y'all. They really love you so much. I love you so much. And I'll see y'all later. Bye.